So, hello and welcome to this virtual artist talk event with Basha Ruth Nelson. On the occasion of her exhibit at the Boardman Road Branch Library in Poughkeepsie. My name is Jewel Ratzlaff and I'll be moderating tonight's event. Please be aware that we are recording this event and the recording will be available for viewing on the Library District's YouTube channel at a later date. I'd like to ask you to mute your microphones and to keep them on mute to minimize background, background noise throughout the program. Okay. Following the presentation, there will be a time for questions. So I'm also going to encourage you to um, enter your questions at any time into the chat box. And I'll be gathering your questions for Basha to address later on. Basha's exhibit entitled Interplay can be viewed now through November 3rd during regular library hours at the Boardman Road Branch Library, 141 Boardman Road in Poughkeepsie. Basha Ruth Nelson, sculptor and installation artist, Basha Ruth Nelson received her Master of Arts degree from New York University. Her works have been exhibited nationally and internationally and are held in numerous public and private collections. Basha has works in public spaces, including Riverfront Green Park in Peekskill, Hudson Valley Museum of Contemporary Art, Brooklyn Art Library, and the U.S. Embassy in Nassau, Baham ba Bahamas, among other places. For tonight's event, artist Basha Ruth Nelson will be interviewed by artist Elisa Pritzker, and we'll also be enjoying a short video of Basha's works. So welcome Basha and Elisa. Thank you. Uh, okay, here I, we are. Uh, Basha, many people know uh, about you, but I don't know if everybody knows when and where did you start your career in the arts? That's my first question. Well, before that, Elisa, I just want to say a heartfelt thanks to the Boardman Library uh, uh, for bringing the visual arts to the public and the team there, Jewel, uh, Yvonne Lauber, Jeff Giancarlo, uh, they are just amazing to work with. And the curator, Ruth Wally, it's Ruth, it's been a joy knowing you and happy birthday. And then just uh, one more uh, thank you to Todd Brannan and Elisa Pritzka for all you do. Okay, well, you I amazing. take the opportunity to say you're welcome and thank you, of course, for the invitation to be with you. We have a long history of working together, so it's my pleasure. To be and thank you to the library too. It's, it's, I had a, a really great time being at the installation time and, and meeting everybody. Great people. So we are in you are in good hands. So anyway, my question again is yes. when and where did you start your career in the arts? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, my career in the arts actually started uh, when I was about five years old. My grandfather had a coat manufacturing company and I used to design coats. And I, I remember sitting at my grandparents' dining room table and trying to draw the figures and the coat, but I knew enough to show if I wanted a pointed collar or a round collar or pockets with a flap or if I wanted a belt. And my grandfather would make coats for me for, for every season. Uh, and it, it just continued from there. Inside Elisa, uh, during the years that I wasn't doing art, I always knew I was an artist. I understand, I understand the feeling and I can see in your successful career, a long and successful career. So tell us 
tell to everybody that is sharing with you this special moment, what are the main themes of your art? I think the overwhelming theme is freedom. Uh, art, for me, is the one place that no matter what, uh, I guard my freedom to create and communicate. Um, I use all kinds of media and I do installations, which of course I'm not able to show at the library, but I, it, as part of my freedom project, I create rooms filled with paper walls that people could tear down tearing down the walls that separate us, and they write their thoughts about freedom. I've collected it, and I uh, started to work with a wonderful uh, musician, singer, songwriter, uh, Dennis Douglas, and we do performances where I narrate and he plays and sings. So uh, my art uh, takes many forms, but I think the overwhelming theme is freedom. Great. So now it's very appropriate to show the video, <laughs> uh, just for people to, to understand what you are talking about. And this video was produced for the Poughkeepsie Open Studios. So let me uh, go and share. Is it? Can everybody please mute? Okay, well, what an inspiring video. Really beautiful to see the collection and just a portion of your work. It's just a few images of your work. So, Ruth, what are you, what do you have at the library? You said that you don't have an installation. Tell everybody that is sharing this time with you. Uh, what kind of body of work you are exhibiting at the library? Well, uh, I, when Ruth Wally invited me to exhibit here, I just began to think of the space, which I always do, but I began to think of library. What, what is a library? And in a library, uh, there are collections. And there, there are different collections. Uh, there's research material, uh, all kinds of books for all ages of people, uh, biographies, novels, it, it, everything. Uh, there are all types of media. So I began to think in terms of 
a collection. And so I wanted to show the books, my own books that I've created. And, um, and, and choose different works, but I think they all interplay with each other. I think the dimensionality of the works uh, hangs, as we say, hangs together as a collection. And the, the collection runs the gamut from, and I think we'll show some of it, from very joyful work to a very intense piece. I can start sharing if the... Okay, here we are. Tell us about this, this work, I mean this... Yeah, uh, it's, it's one of my books, one of my sketch pads. And so I'm creating a book of memories. This piece is called Memories. And as I created it, and I, and I just folded and cut the pages, uh, the feeling of memories just came to me. And so that's how that book came about. And the different colors, uh, uh, the, there's black in there. Some memories are hard, but some are very hopeful and some are joyful. And uh, so that's what that book is about. Uh, this one, it's interesting. My friend Betty uh, inspired me to buy this book uh, and, and really uh, break out. This, this was done purely emotionally. I literally, I just crumpled the papers. Uh, I, I used the brush and ink and it's called I Remember. And in my religion, we wear that black ribbon when someone passes on as a symbol of mourning and remembrance. And so this was a totally emotional piece for me. <laughs> and this is hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it doesn't show here, but there's a lot of pieces of gold here on it. And... Uh, and this artwork for me, the shapes in it, uh, the moving out of the pieces and the gold flecks on it and the gold dots on it. This is hope. And, and I, I, this is freedom story. So, this is how I create stories. Uh, I'm not a writer, but I tell my story, my freedom story in drawings. And some of it is peaceful and some of it is chaotic and there are hard lines. Uh, the fourth one in from the left is just a very strong black line. It's a very definitive one. And uh, where freedom is concerned, we shouldn't, no one should stop us. No one should stop us. I like what you said about it, that you're not a writer. And this is a very interesting comment many, People have a question about, a, you know, the communication of a visual artist. We don't use words, we use images. 
to express our feelings. So it's a, it's, it's a way to understand with a different language. And it's, it's interesting when people can connect with, with a visual image and without thinking about words. It's a very interesting you know, way of communication and the, the variation of lines can, can show different you know, sentiments and it's very clear into that. It's a beautiful collection at the library. It's one of my favorite, you know, series. Okay, let's go to another kind of mood <laughs> yes. and materials. Yeah, uh, this is actually uh, aluminum flashing that's used for building. It's on a plexi background and, uh, and the color strips that you see on it. Uh, those are glitterly plastic uh, stripes that I found uh, at Canal Plastic in New York City. Uh, one day I found rolls of them and the colors were so beautiful. I just had to, you know, get them and incorporate them. And this this piece just speaks jazz to me, and it's a happy piece. It's a happy piece. And Geisha, I you know I I just started um, to create a collage, and I had my marks, and I was using that. Uh, that plastic, the, the different colors you see. And the shape took on for me the very traditional shape that, that I've seen so much uh, of the geisha with the tea ceremonies. And so uh, it's my interpretation of it. And it's three-dimensional, actually. Uh, it's in... Uh, it's in plexi, and it's surrounded by the black plexi that's holding it. And it's uh, what you see in the center, the form surrounded with black, is then sitting on a plexi piece. So sometimes I, I start to create, and there are shapes, and then the shapes speak to me. Sometimes I start out with an idea. Well, that is a true meaning of freedom. You work with freedom. You yeah. said that your topic is freedom, but the way that you work is also freedom. Yeah. 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 Uh, this, this piece is uh, very intense for me and, and very sad. Uh, I, I was uh, in the studio one day, I had this brown wrapping paper, and I started to make marks on it with my, I have a wonderful brush, it's called a striping brush, that, that creates beautiful things, but I started to use it with the black ink and brown ink, and, and I didn't like what it was, and I crumpled the paper up, and all of a sudden, this, I felt like I was seeing eyes. And, uh, and the metal strips at the top and the bottom, I, I had just seen them, I think, in either Home Depot or Lowe's one day, and I liked them, so I just bought them. They were in my studio, and I also had rolls of that copper mesh. And I just put this piece together and it's, it was called Never Again. And it was a Holocaust remembrance piece. And, and the metal strips uh, reminded me of the railroad tracks and the faces behind the wire. And this year I renamed it never again I can't breathe. And I think it speaks 
to situations where people are trapped. And it, it, it's, it's one, for me, it's one of my most meaningful pieces and it's very small. <laughs> I don't remember uh, the exact dimensions, but it, it's a small piece. It's not a huge collection, but it, it's very meaningful to me. And this one is called I'm Here. Uh, there was a year in my life when two members of my family, whom I love dearly, died within three weeks of each other. And it was devastating. And I was preparing about a month after that for an art exhibit. And it was hard. But as I prepared for that exhibit and as I was creating the work, I was finding myself. And I had found this uh, silver mesh, I think maybe in Michael's or in one of the Lowe's or Home Depot's. And I had that mesh and uh, I created a form out of paper that I, uh, I had a fabricator do for me in mirrored plexi. And this piece is, I'm here. And it was really for me an assertion of life. So it, for me, this is a very joyful piece. And many people want that piece and belongs to, the, to your private collection, so. Yeah. Yes, yes, a couple of people, but I can't let that one go. <laughs> oh. So, as you can see, we, we just show a few of the pieces because we are hoping that some of you will pass by the library and see the rest, or if not, we have here this beautiful picture of Ruth in front of her exhibit, and she just talk about a few of them. Um, so I have a final question for you and then we can we can let the people because we you and myself we love people to participate. So just keep thinking about what questions do you have while I ask Ruth the last question that I have. And tell me about uh, what happened with the social isolation uh. of coronavirus if your art got influenced in any way. I would like to know what happened in this moment that we are in a different reality. So if you'd yeah. like to share that with us. Yeah, sure. Uh, when it first began and the reality hit, I, I couldn't get to my studio. Uh, I felt like I wasn't creating anything. And we were ordering things in and the cartons kept building. And one day, I, I don't know, I just looked at the cartons and I said, you're a sculptor. Look at those cartons. Wow. Because all the different shapes and symbols on them uh, and I started to create totems, and I call them my pandemic totems. And then, uh, and now in my head, I'm preparing for the next lockdown, and I'm collecting uh, in the apartment rolls of uh, my rice paper scrolls, because I think I'm going to be doing an installation on those paper scrolls and, and drawing on them. Uh, and I also realized, I had a, another realization. I would walk by an end table and I, I would move a picture frame 
maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and I'd look, and I'd walk away. Or I, I see a candy dish on the coffee table, and I'd move it. Or if there was a new magazine, uh, I didn't like the cover of it in relation to something else. And all of a sudden, I realize that I'm an artist whether I'm in my studio or not visually, things have to work for me. So I learned that in the pandemic. And the other thing with, yes, isolation, but one thing that has worked for me is uh, like Arts Mid Hudson has a weekly Wednesday meeting and they'd meet in Poughkeepsie at a restaurant that I could never make those meetings but now they're on Zoom, so I could make almost every meeting and get connected now with more of the art community here in Poughkeepsie. So it, it's like it's had its yin and yang in a way for me. Yeah, I hear you. It's a, thank you for sharing that. It, you know, I, I can say that the arts community, that's where we belong immediately look for many, many ways to, to cope with the pandemic. And it was an immediate reaction and we are all connected, it's totally true. Not only through Agnes Hudson, also the Hammond Museum. There are several uh, gatherings and that's, that's great how the, the arts community responded and we are all connected. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Basha, for your honesty, your creativity, and, and to show that, yes, art is in every movement, in every, everything that we do. And, yeah. and I'm sure that your movement of the, the jar or small things in your house, it, it's just a, a way to see. A way, it's an equilibrium that you see in your objects and everything. That is true artists, and I'm sure that everything that you do is, is creative. So anyway, we already have one question and then I will tell Jewel to take it over. Thank one you. of the questions that we already have is, how do you create? How do you mm. get your inspiration and your material? How do you create? I think that that was a question from Ruth. So yeah. I'm, I'm just passing it to you. I, I don't plan in advance or I, I, I plan in advance if I have a commission for a sculpture, then I want to know if it's indoor, outdoor, what materials, what climate. Yes, that type of artwork I, I plan carefully and I make maquettes before the actual piece is created. For the other works, uh, I work intuitively. Uh, there's a voice inside that tells me when something is working and when it's not. Uh, sometimes I, I just need to express something. Sometimes I find a material that just captures me. Uh, I, and and then that material might sit in my studio for a while and then all of a sudden I feel a connection with it. And I, I just do it intuitively. And at some point I stop and I look at it and, and it's kind of like, is it working? Hmm. Well, maybe I need to do more of, and then the, the intellect comes in, but it, it, it goes back and forth, goes back and forth like that. Thank you. And do, do we have any other questions for, for Basha? Do we have a curious people? Uh, Ruth Wally had asked me a question a while back, and uh, uh, Ruth, I, 
I don't know uh, if I fully answered it then. But she asked me about abstraction. I actually started out as a realistic painter, uh, painting landscapes and principally trees. I loved to paint trees. And in grad school, uh, one of my teachers was Don Eddy, who is a photorealist. And I thought he was going to just uh, encourage my realism. And what his method of teaching was to sit with each student for as long as it could, took, it could be a half hour, 40 minutes, 20 minutes, questioning them. So one day he sat down next to me and he said, I see you paint trees. I said, yes. He said, well, why do you paint trees? I said, well, I love trees. He said, what do you love about them? I said, I love the dichotomy of them. I said, I, I, I love that they're smooth and they're rough and they go into the ground and they go up to the heavens and they live and bloom and they die. And then they live and they bloom again. I love that. Mm -hmm. And he smiled at me. He said, tomorrow, I want you to come in with a blank canvas and paint everything you just told me without ever painting a tree. And that was my first abstraction. I want I, to say something very interesting, uh, Basha. Uh, Piet Mondrian painted trees for a long time until he became famous with red, yellow, and blue squares. He passed, if you go to his beginnings, he painted with his uncle trees, mm -hmm. and very realistic trees, and ended up being one of the most famous ab abstract painters. So you are in that realm. <laughs> okay? Uh, well, <laughs> it's a wonderful story, and it's, a, it's, it's just, a, you know, it just remind me to Mondrian that is, I study and it's one, one really a wonderful story, a wonderful artist. So you are in the same collective. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a fabulous story and I must find re reproductions of his trees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have a couple. Um, I have one tree painting that I've held on to where uh, my two children <laughs> were sick and it was uh, during the summer and oh boy they were cooped up and, and having a hard time and I said tell you what let's go out in the backyard and why don't you sit in the willow tree and I'll paint you and they were quiet and playing in the tree and I still have that painting. Mm -hmm. so you know, one, one of the important things for many people that are not in the arts is that you are seeing no with your eyes, you are seeing with your heart. And this is one of why abstraction is to see the sentiment, to see with the heart, not with the eyes. It's a very important, you know, way to explain for people that uh, you see the sentiment, the colors, the shapes, and with your heart. Uh, that's, a, that's very important for people that are no artists to know why people can do abstractions. Thank you. Um, we do have a couple of questions in the chat uh, box. So uh, we have a question from Ruth. Um, do you recall how you came to create pieces that spill out of their frame into the outside? Uh, I, I think it started uh, in grad school. Uh, we had an assignment, there was an exhibit of French Impressionism at the Met. 
and we had an assignment to go and I went and the exhibit was so crowded that I left. I went back again, it was still too crowded to see the artwork. I went back a third time, but this time I got so intrigued with the people looking at the artwork. There seemed to be like an electric connection between someone's eyes and the artwork. Hmm that it, thorough, it just captured me. And I began, I got this crazy notion. If it's so wonderful to look at an artwork, what would it be like to be inside an artwork? And I couldn't get the thought out of my head. And one morning I woke up and I said, well, If you want to find out what it's like to be inside an artwork, you're going to have to do it because no one else is going to do it. And I came up with a project and uh, my children and their best friend, Carol, I uh, can tell you, uh, I had them paint strips of paint, strips, strips, strips of paint. And uh, uh, I had my uncle, come to our home and build a ceiling grid. And I began hanging the strips. And I created a three-dimensional artwork that you could walk into. And the galleries at NYU exhibited it for me. Uh, I saw people come into the room and look at it and without any coaxing walk inside and the way it was lit the paint was uh, just mirrored on their skin on their faces i saw one couple kissing in the artwork i saw people chatting uh holding children's hands uh, fingering the strips and I realized because I hadn't done this consciously that I had created a painting on the right side going in were daylight colors like morning colors and when you stepped in, you saw bright colors in the back and, and people would gravitate toward them. And then towards coming out, they were the evening colors, the lilacs and, and, and the soft blues, and the gray blues. I did not do that consciously, but I was still doing landscapes. And so the three dimensionality started in grad school. Uh, Ruth, I hope that that answers. It, it's always been part of it. It's fascinating that your answer leads right into uh, another question, um, which is that your work is so expressive in terms of its texture and interaction with the participant walking through sculpture. Um, how does it feel to you presenting this in a pandemic Zoom medium? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I understand that. And doing what we're doing now helps. Mm -hmm. The conversation helps. The sharing helps. I'll call you as soon as possible. Thank you. So, uh, so that's one. Okay. Uh, and, and the other thing is with, uh, as I mentioned earlier with Arts Mid-Hudson and the meetings that I'm able to go to now 
having that sense of community is very important. And we share our artwork on that if we choose to with each other. I'm also a member of uh, a women's art group from the Hammond Museum and another art group called uh, ABC, which is uh, Art Breakfast and Communication. Of course, we're not meeting for breakfast these days, but we're meeting on Zoom. So all that interaction is helping. Terrific. Well, probably you'll, you'll create a, a participation post-pandemic. You have a, a commitment once we get out of this situation. That will be one of your projects, maybe. Well, I've spoken with Dennis Douglas, <laughs> my musician partner, and we've already talked about uh, maybe doing a performance uh, uh, dealing with what's going on in our world now. Uh, our performance is always about tearing down the walls that separate people and, and communicating. So we've been talking about doing that. And uh, Dennis, Dennis and his wife, Allison, live in the same apartment house, uh, also with Pat. And so it's nice. Uh, I just met them today in the lobby and we could socially distance with masks on and chat. So that's a big help. Great. There was also a question about your books. And if you look at your books from left to right, Betty wondered if they are in any way connected, like a linear story would be as you read from left to right. That's interesting. Betty is a writer. Uh -huh. and, and so I think Betty, uh, I think, maybe you start to write and then you might move a paragraph or change a sentence, uh, do something, but there's a starting point. And for me, there's a starting point. Uh, I'll look at a page and there's a starting point. Sometimes the starting point is drawing. And, and using my striping brush and ink and just, just going through the book and drawing on the different pages. And then I create the shapes with them. Uh, and, and the thing is, I think like in writing maybe, uh, and you could tell me if I'm right or wrong with this, but there has to be a connection between all of the elements. So that's what I'm looking to do. I don't know if I've answered your question or not. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any more questions in the chat box. Um, some lovely uh, congratulatory comments and, and um, appreciation of your beautiful artwork. Does anyone have any more questions that they have for Basha? Well, I, Jewel, I, again, I just want to thank the library uh, and the work that you all do and, and Ruth who took on this role of curating the exhibits. This has been one of uh, my nicest experiences. Every time I go to the library, I see people walk up to the wall and stand and look. And they are more intense than people who come to an art opening at a gallery who come and we look at the artwork and then we chat with people. Uh, 
I have been very impressed with this experience and, and all of you. It's really been wonderful. Wow. Yes, I want to certify that because during installation, uh, we had several people coming and, and really, really looking at the work and you're providing a service to the community. People that sometimes they are afraid to go to a gallery or is not in their daily life. And this is a wonderful uh, program that you have. People can, can see the work and, and really enjoy it. It's, it was, I, I just say that what Basha said, it, it was amazing the amount of people that stopped by and, and really enjoy the work and, and took like really a lot of time to, to go through all the pieces. It was a wonderful surprise for me too. So but you, your work looks wonderful. I, I, I don't, you know, it's not a surprise that people got engaged with your work, but. Yes, and how about that chartreuse wall? You're right, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, I thought, oh my, Chargers, <laughs> well, but it works. <laughs> um, Dennis did add, add another question uh, to the field, if you have a, another minute, Basha. Yes. He asks, what is it like to take an idea to a fabricator to do it in metal? Yeah, I, it's wonderful. It, it, it's a collaboration. So the fabricator, uh, the, the fabricators that I've worked with, uh, they're artists and, and it, it's a partnership. And then to see an idea come to life and they share in that process with me. So it, it's, it's, it's a very rewarding process. Terrific. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> a jewel? Yes. Can I say something to all of you and Basha? Can you hear me? Yes. Well, oh, I, wonderful. <laughs> well, that... we could not have these marvelous exhibits without Ruth Wally. So, yes, oh. <laughs> Ruth, she puts in so much time and effort in planning out these exhibits and curating and, and just our, our hat is off to Ruth, the amazing work that you do. Jewel, thank you so much. And Basha and Elise, I just can't thank you both. And actually, was it Todd, your helper? Yes. I can't thank you all enough for this wonderful, wonderful exhibit. I felt that the library had an opportunity to see something totally different in dimension. I have to say, of course, the flat screens on our computers don't do your work justice, but I have had the most enlightening experience being with you, Basha, and thank you for your, your explanations of abstract art. I remember asking you that question because it's something I never could understand. What am I looking at? Am I supposed to be getting a message of some kind? I wonder how many times people look at things and they say, I don't know what the heck I'm looking at. And I, I just find uh, your work extraordinary. And you know, the large piece of sculpting that I wanted so much to be able to bring to the library, but we had no way of doing that. And I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you've done for us. And it's a joy to be dealing with your work and with you, Basha. And your stories, your talk to us was most enlightening. And you touched my heart when you spoke about I cannot breathe. And I have a feeling that many people sense that as well. Given our time now, it is a very difficult piece now that I understand where you're coming from with this. And the explanation just hit my heart. I thank you so much. And all of you. And Jewel, you are a jewel, as you know. I, Jewel's work with me is outstanding. She is a person, my go-to person, and has always, always been delightful to me. And thank you so much. And thank you for your compliments. Oh, thank you, my dear. <clears throat> I want to say that if somebody missed asking a question, they can visit uh, Basha's website and they can contact her if it is a late question that uh, is coming after we finish this 
wonderful gathering. Sometimes we a question pops after we finish the gathering. You can always, I'm sure that Basha will be happy to respond to your questions. You can visit her uh, website, basharuthnelson.com and contact her through, the, through her website and also to see more of her work. She has a, several collections in her website. So, Jul, I'll, I'll give you the last questions. And thank you, everybody. And thank you for inviting me, uh, Basha, to be with you. Oh, wow, this has been delightful. Um, Elisa, can you stop sharing your screen? Yes, definitely. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, easy. so let's see Very easy to do. I can um, find the other works. And there we go. Uh, this, is, this is the one I wanted. Okay, so here is um, Bosch's website. And of course, you can always learn more about what's happening at the Poughkeepsie Public Library District at our um, our website, popelib.org. We also have a variety of emails that people can sign up for just the kind of thing that they're interested in. So if you're interested in art, you can sign up for an art email. If you're interested in local history, you can sign up for a local history um, email that um, keeps you up to date on what's happening at the library. Bosch's exhibit called Interplay will be at the Boardman Road Branch Library through November 3rd, and you can view it during regular library hours, which is Monday through Saturday. Uh, that library is closed on Sundays at 141 Boardman Road, so Monday through Saturday. Uh, please remember to bring your mask. We always uh, require the face coverings when you're in the library. And um, the works are, well, most of the works are for sale That's and there true. are uh, price sheets available at the library as well. So again, I thank you all for joining us tonight for this event and our, our deepest appreciation to Basha, Elisa, and Ruth for putting this all together. Thank you so much and good night. Good night, thank you, thank you all. Hi, Ruth. Thank you.